In this video, we're going to explore CI-CD pipelines with Android and Circle CI. We'll start with an overview and then we'll jump right into a hands-on example. So CI-CD stands for Continuous Integration, Continuous Deployment, or Continuous Integration, Continuous Delivery, depending on how you have it set up. CI-CD integrates with your version control system that you use. Essentially, when you perform a commit or a push, it will walk through a series of value-added steps from building the project to potentially doing a technical debt analysis to running unit tests automatically. And the idea is that when it passes all of these gates, you get a green signal indicating that everything worked as planned. You can configure different value-added activities to happen upon commit. These are some that are common. And the advantage of this is that you have confidence in knowing that every time you do a commit and push, each of these steps will run. You will configure these steps in a file called a config.yaml file. You see here there's a bit of setup. Where do we find the code? What Docker image are we using? Or essentially like a virtual machine in a box. What JVM options do we have? And then finally steps. These are those gates that our code must pass through once we do a commit and a push. So let's see how it works. I navigate to CircleCI and I'm going to choose login with GitHub because it has good integration with GitHub. Now it wants me to select an organization. I'll go ahead and choose my own GitHub repository. And now we'll select our repository or our project that we're going to configure with CircleCI. It will query my GitHub instance and find all of the relevant repositories. Let's go ahead and choose my plant diary 32. Now this is the way that we're going to get that config.yaml file. We can commit a starter pipeline to a new branch, and we know that branches are things that we can have independent of main or master, or we can merge them into main master when we're ready. We can create our own config.yaml file and simply commit that and then attach it to CircleCI, or we can have CircleCI create a config.yaml that we can edit. Let's go ahead and go with the fastest approach. Now you see it's running our workflow, and also notice that the branch is CircleCI Project Setup. If I navigate to GitHub, I can go to this repository. And we notice that a branch was created automatically for us by CircleCI called CircleCI Project Setup. Let's go ahead and explore that branch and look at the commits. And we see add CircleCI config.yaml. And here is our config.yaml file. Uh, so we have our Docker image and then our steps, a fairly straightforward series of steps. Back to CircleCI and we see the job has completed successfully. We can click on Say Hello and we can look at some of the things it's doing. So spin up environment, uh, prepare environment variables, check out code and say hello. There are more steps that I would like to do here, so I'm going to edit that config.yaml file. I can either pull these changes into my IDE and edit the file in my IDE, or I can make sure I'm on a branch and then click the pencil button here and that will allow me to edit this file directly in GitHub. I'm going to use a config.yaml file that has worked for me very well in Android projects in the past, and it's one that I put together uh, with some samples I found on the internet, plus a bit of trial and error to get some permissions working. For example, the download dependencies didn't work until I added this step to change permissions. Nonetheless, this file has worked well for me. The only tweak I made for this specific project is I bumped the Docker image API to 30, where previously I had been using 29. And API 30 is the min SDK we're using on this specific project, so I think this will work out well. Bottom line, here's what I recommend. A config.yaml file is kind of like sourdough bread. You don't open up Notepad and start typing line 1 through line 30 by yourself. You typically take one that you know already works, and then you use it and or modify it as needed. So what I recommend for you is just use mine. It's on GitHub and I'll put a direct link to the file in the uh, comments or in the notes for this video. Uh, but nonetheless, just use mine if you want and then alter it as you prefer. As soon as I commit my changes, you notice that CircleCI picks up the change and automatically kicks off the pipeline. We can watch it run here. And so far, it looks like my build Gradle file is working pretty well because you see all of the steps have completed. As a matter of fact, we can go back to workflow and we can see success uh, on my new config YAML file. Given that it's worked okay, I'm going to go ahead and merge this CircleCI branch into my main or master branch. 
So go back to My Plant Diary, compare and pull requests because it sees recent changes. We'll go ahead and leave this at Circle CI Project Setup, and then we'll create pull request. Now, this is pulling into main, and we see that all checks have passed. Uh, notice that Circle CI will actually run when we try to do a pull request as well. And there, this branch has no conflicts with main, so we will go ahead and merge. Now, go back to our main branch and notice there's this dot circle CI directory, which is where our config.yaml file lives. Let's go to our IDE and pull down these changes. Now, this often goes into a hidden file system because it's dot circle CI and starting with the period indicates that it should be hidden. So, I have opened up the directory where this project lives so that we can take a look at how the file system actually changes. Now, I'm going to go to my module choose get and choose pull. Pull from master because remember that's what we merged into and we see one file updated and three commits. We can do a quick view commits and sure enough you see here update uh, config.yaml and add circle ci config yaml. We go back to my windows explorer view and once again we see uh, circle ci and then config yaml. So we see that the file sure enough has landed in our local environment. We likely won't need to make any further changes to this file unless we want to add a new step to our CI-CD pipeline, which we occasionally do want to do, but nonetheless, uh, it's not something that we edit quite frequently. So let's go ahead and try some things out. I'm going to add a couple of unit tests. I'm going to add one that will pass. And you see, confirm 5 plus 5 equals 10. So I will save and commit and push. I'll go back to Circle CI and I anticipate that it's going to be able to pick up this change for us. And sure enough, we notice that it's running. As a matter of fact, it looks like it ran the pipeline when we did that merge earlier. Now it's running the pipeline again on our unit test that we have just added. And sure enough, the tests have passed. We can go back to our workflow. And we can go back to our project and we can see that sure enough, the pipeline has passed. Let's try this one more time, but let's try a, a test that intentionally fails. So I had a new unit test. 5 plus 6 equals 10 obviously will not pass. Commit and push. Return to Circle CI, and we'll notice that the build is already starting. One other thing that's pretty handy to point out is the integration back from Circle CI to GitHub. You notice while the test is running, it gives us a little amber colored light here. And if the test passes, or if the entire pipeline passes, it will turn to a green check. If it fails, it will turn to a red X. And then from GitHub, we can click on that green check as you see here, and we can directly go into Circle CI and see the details. So it's a neat way of giving a quick verification of every one of our commits and seeing that they're passing. What's important about this is that if it does fail, we can go to that very specific commit, which we can track down to a specific developer, and then we can ask the developer to fix that broken unit test or that uncompiling code or something like that. In other words, we don't have to wait. We know immediately exactly where the issue occurred. Now, we knew that this one was going to fail, and sure enough, it did fail. So you see that the amber light has turned into a red X. And once again, we can go to details and from GitHub, it tells us exactly what failed. Java Lang assertion error expected 10, but was 11. And if we go to the circle CI view, uh, once again, we can see the failure here, very obvious, easy to set up. Let's fix, the, fix this because it makes me nervous to have something failing. Five plus six equals 11. And once again, the build picks up just almost instantaneously once GitHub sees that push. Uh, GitHub, GitHub has something called GitHub Actions where you can have events occur once something happens in GitHub. So on a milestone closing, on a commit, on a pull request, so on and so forth. And that's a nice way to do an integration like this. And we see that CircleCI has done a really good integration. All in all, I think this was a pretty straightforward setup as well. Let's let this run. And we have success. We always like to see that. Navigate back to our repository and we notice that there's a green check on the top. We can take a look at our commits and we can see that we had several green checks, a red X and then a green check. 
My advice to you is if you see a red X, fix it as soon as possible. Don't keep investing in a code base that you know is broken because then you build technical debt and it gets even harder to fix. So integrate Circle CI early, build good unit test coverage, consider making those unit tests from behavior driven design given when then syntax, which gives you good coverage of all of your requirements. Have it all integrated together and then keep an eye on it and it's really going to set your project up for success. So in this video, we've looked at Circle CI in Android and how to use it to create CI CD pipelines. This is the start of something that really has a whole lot of potential. So I hope this video was helpful and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.